Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. So this is probably Christmas day that y'all are seeing this. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all, all the things. Um, I hope you all had a great Christmas or going to have a great Christmas because I've been posting these um, at midnight just so that's just the time that I chose. I don't know why. I'm over here taking my shoes off, y'all. I just got home um, from my mother's house. Today is December 20th, and I posted for you all to do um, to do a Q&A. So I'm going to answer some of those questions today. If I get some more tomorrow and until this video, probably until Christmas Eve. Um, not that y'all even know this, but anyways... I might do a few more days of questions just depending on how many more questions and then if they're different than what the average person is asking. Um, so yeah, I'm doing it like this because the rest of my house is just full of laundry. It's a mess. There's nowhere for me to shoot without like clothes in the background. And why not just give y'all like a nice little Christmas vibe? That's my treat. It's not all the way done. It is never gonna get all the way done. So here we go. Um, thanks for participating in the Q&A, y'all. Um, that's always appreciated. So, just trying to get to YouTube and pull up the actual questions and see what. Okay, it's not working on my iPad. Let's try my work phone. <laughs> Y'all know I still vlog with my phone. Oh yeah, I hope, I'm have this on cinematic view and I hope it's not making that noise that it makes sometimes. Let me, let me pause this and see if it's making that noise. All right, so as of right now, I don't hear that noise and I hope I don't film this whole thing and then when I'm editing it, I hear it. Um, and y'all will know the noise that I'm talking about if it's there. So apologies in advance if it ends up going in the background. It sounds like the lens is adjusting is the noise that I'm referring to. Anywho, <laughs> to the questions. I'm um, just going to read them in order that they are in on the actual post. So, Michael Brown says, thanks for the vlogs. My pleasure. What makes security the best part of training for you? I know you can't share information. Just curious why you like it so much. Also, can you travel home on the weekends? If so, is this a part of your flying benefits? Or do you have to pay? Um, so, Michael, to answer the first part of your question, what makes security the best part of training? Um, I just find the security and safety. I just find those classes really intriguing from JetBlue to Envoy to now here. Um, that class has just always piqued my interest the most. It's probably because I'm just really curious. Like, I'm a super curious person. Like, I like to know things. And as much as it sounds weird, crashes and safety, safety things and emergencies just like make my ears go like, oh, what? And I just, I just like to know why. Like I'm a person that asks a lot of why questions. So when it comes to that type of stuff, there's a lot of whys that I can get from that. So that's, that's just, that's it. I mean, I'm not hoping that I ever have to deal with this situation like that. I'm just always intrigued by how things happen and probably just more so so I can kind of be on my game to look out for cues if even possible for those things not to happen um so that's why I like that the most um also can you travel home on the weekends I can travel home any day that I'm not scheduled to work um so with my airline now I'm on reserve <laughs> It's killing me, y'all. Um, but I'm on reserve and I work weekends, right? So the schedule they gave me out of training, I couldn't bid for it. I didn't have any choice. They literally just assigned it, said, go to Oakland, work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's what I've been working. And then all my days off, which are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, I come home. And yes, that is a perk of being um, employed with a airline you get to um travel um non-revenue aka standby with your airline um non-revenue equals free 
Um, and then a added on perk of being a crew member, aka a pilot or a flight attendant, you have cabin seat agreements with other airlines, which means I don't only get to fly on my airline standby for free, I can list with, I'm just going to, almost any airline in the world to fly on. Not really, but definitely all the U.S. based airlines, I can just pop up at the gate. Hey, I listed, is there a seat available for me? They either say yes or no. It's a 50-50 chance, really. If they say yes, I get on, I sit down, and I go where I need to go for free. Um, so yeah, um, hope that answers your question. The Molly Ray Hernanan. I don't, I'm screwing that all the way up. I'm gonna try to post the questions down here, y'all. Um, OMG, yay. My question is, how do you stay motivated to work both careers? Do you ever get overwhelmed with your real estate clients while flying? Huh. Much love, Ryan. By the way, you are amazing. I was so excited to see the training journey. You really have pushed me into wanting to become a flight attendant. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. That's very sweet. Um, my question is, how do you stay motivated to work both careers? Um, it really doesn't take a lot of motivation necessarily because it's, it's two things that I truly love. Like I enjoy both things equally. Um, one, I make more money from, so there's a lot of motivation, I guess, if we're going to talk motivation to stay in that real estate career, it's, my bread and butter it's how I afford to live um and then flying you know like I probably have said this maybe a time or two over the last five years it was just always something that I wanted to do from um childhood I'm one of those people that have been flying my entire life my first airplane ride was at three months from what my mother says and I've consecutively been on airplanes every year of my life there has never been a year of my life that I was not on an airplane. I've been traveling my whole life. So um, maybe just watching those flight attendants just is embedded in me and I, I can't get away from it. No matter how hard I try. Um, do you ever get overwhelmed with your real estate clients while flying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm still not to the point where I have like a, a team surrounding me in real estate. Um, I still pretty much handle every single transaction from beginning to end um all by myself except i do have a transaction coordinator but she literally all she does is paperwork um so all communication that goes between me and my clients or it's it's me it's it's this phone it's it's the emails and um yeah i do i get i get extremely overwhelmed some clients if you watch my real estate vlogs i mean I get overwhelmed when I wasn't even flying. So yes, the answer is yes. I get overwhelmed because some people just need me a lot more than others. Um, yeah, so that answers that question. And good luck on your flight attendant journey if you're gonna, if you're gonna come to these friendly skies. Um, Blessed Angel 07 says, how do you balance your flight attendant career with your realtor business? And how did you plan to keep up with your expenses during flight attendant training? That's a great question. And I was actually um, in my DMs earlier talking to someone about that. Um, how do I balance? So the reason I wanted to come to this airline so badly and why I'm actually here and I took the chance to do it again is because for me, after having the experience of knowing what it, it's like to fly, um, I knew after doing research that this airline best fits the structure of my lifestyle, right? So not every airline has a base where you live. So that is, for me, that was number one importance. Um, I wanted to be based where I live. I live in Houston, Texas. Um, spring, but Houston, Texas, it takes me 20 minutes to get to IAH Airport, Bush Intercontinental, and it takes me about 40, 40 to 50 minutes to get to Hobby, which is the base for my airline. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a drive there rather than having to fly to work. 
So eventually when I do get based here, um, that will help with the balance because I'll just, I'll be home. Um, this airline also does not have any minimum or maximum amount of hours that we can work per month. So I have the flexibility to literally not work. And when I say not work, I mean not work, not a thing on my schedule and stay employed. I have to do some work to get my schedule like that, right? Like I have to find a way to give away what I'm scheduled for the month because I will always be scheduled something for the month, but I have the ability here to give away everything and clear my schedule. So if there is times where my real estate life is just all consuming, I can go to whatever extremes, legal extremes that I need to go to, to get my flight attendant schedule gone. Um, so I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm literally still, I just hit a month um, on the 18th of being hired with this company. So I'm not there yet with the balance, but these are all the thoughts that I had beforehand of um, coming here, just knowing that I would have those abilities. Any airline is gonna take you some time to get to where you were at max flexibility because reserve is just, it's difficult to be on. And when you're not based where you wanna be based, that makes it a little more difficult too. Um, but I'm just holding on to the hope <laughs> that eventually your girl will be based in Houston and I can just drive to work and be there within the hour or two without having to look at commute flights and da 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 da. Um, I think, how do you, and so what else I was saying to the young lady I was messaging earlier that this time around, I've been a realtor longer than I've been a flight attendant. Um, just one year more, honestly. I got my real estate license in 2016. I started flying in 2017. When I first started flying with JetBlue, um, that first year of balancing my real estate career, it just went down. It just it just went down the drain. One, I wasn't nearly as busy as I am now, um, but it just it wasn't a focus because I was like, ooh, flying, and I was based in New York, and the back and forth. It was. I don't want to say it was impossible because nothing's impossible, but it was damn near impossible, y'all. And then after my second year, um, you have to renew your real estate license every two years. I just put my license in inactive status because I just, I didn't, I wasn't giving it the energy that it deserved. So this time around, when I found out what my training date was going to be and things like that, I purposely slowed down my real estate business, meaning like, I didn't take on any new clients for the end of the year because I knew this would be difficult. I knew there was a great chance that I would not initially be based in Houston. And I just needed to, I'm the type of realtor, like I want to give my clients my all. Like I want to be overwhelmed in a sense, right? Like I want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can for you. And being away from business, like physically, um, that's, that wouldn't be fair to my clients. So I stopped taking on clients really a couple of months ago. So I still have clients right now, but those people have been in transactions and things like that, but I just didn't onboard any new ones. I will start really onboarding new clients again, come January. Cause girls got to get to the money. Um, I'm taking a long time to answer this. This is going to be a long Q and A. <laughs> um, how did you plan to keep up with your expenses during flight attendant training? Um, I didn't really have to plan for it because as a realtor, I live my life based on, I don't know when money may come or may go, right? Um, closings happen, closings don't happen. So, um, I have a financial advisor and she has me save about six months of expenses at all times just to have saved. So I'm blessed in that way, I guess you could say. Do I have money struggles still sometimes? Absolutely. Um, do I go months without closings? Absolutely. So this is another benefit of this job. At least I will be getting in some income that can maybe cover maybe my rent until I buy, I don't know, car note, you know, whatever. Um, but I didn't necessarily have to plan for it because I've, that's just how I've already been living my life. Um, 
but I will say for those of you all that don't have multiple sources of income and you have to stop working for those 30 days to go to training, save, 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 save. And I can't say it enough because literally um, my class right now, we went to training October 24th um, and my airline did give a $1,200 bonus to um, those of us that graduated and we got that a few days after training. Um, but we didn't get paid again until literally today. Today is December 20th. Um, this was our first paycheck. And it really is just because of the date that our class, our time frame that we fell in and payroll and things like that. But this, I'm just giving you all this example because this is real for many of my classmates. They hadn't worked a job job unless they had other things going on. I don't know. But since October 24th, we got one payment of $1,200 um, a few days after we graduated. So like the last week of November, I think like around Thanksgiving, we got that pay. Um, and now December 20th is the first time that we've gotten paid again, but it's not even a full check. This is just a paycheck for the one week that we worked in December. So unless those people picked up um, the couple of days extra that they had, I mean, November y'all, the one week that we worked in November. So unless you picked up or did more than what you were assigned, um, paycheck was minimal. I mean, my, I, can, I don't mind telling y'all. My paycheck today was like $454 or something. So, and then we won't get paid again until, well, these questions just be having me run off. We get paid once a month as flight attendants, but my airline has it to where they can advance you money advance you your paycheck on the fifth of the month and you can kind of put in how much you want starting off the max advance you can get is twelve hundred dollars so if you opt into that on the fifth of every month you can get twelve hundred dollars and then on the 20th of the month we get paid again so for me I, i'm not taking the advance because i don't want to be owing the company money and that's just i'm gonna just leave it as simple as that it's an advance if i don't work you know, then they won't have money to pay themselves back. So I don't want to deal with all of that. So I'm only getting paid once a month on the 20th. Um, and that our pay works. Um, so basically January 20th, I will be paid for everything that I worked in December. So our pay is always one month behind. Um, so yeah, I'm saying all of that to say, save your coin. Okay, try to save... I'm going to say at least three months just to be on the cushion safe side. Save your coin. Save it. Um, I'm going to give y'all another, another, another reason, <laughs> which I mean, you shouldn't need reasons to save your coin, but another reason. So right now, y'all know I'm not based in Houston. I'm based in Oakland and I'm on reserve. I do not have a crash pad in Oakland. One, I don't want one. Two, there really aren't any. Oakland, California, really, but definitely Oakland, the Bay Area is, sorry, y'all, my friend's calling. The Bay Area is not, um, it's not really feasible to have crash pads. It's just, it just costs too much to live there, so having a crash pad don't make sense. So I'm saying all that to say, I am paying each weekend I go to work for a hotel. I got some girls together and we're splitting a room. Um, we It's six of us that split a room for, we book it for a week and we end up paying basically um, $140 for the week. So if I multiply that, or you can potentially pay more if you don't want to share and you know, but yeah, so let's just say, I think our like crew rate, we get discounts on hotels. I think the crew rate hotel is like $108. If you just, if for if for three days that you have to go to work each week, because we have our reserve blocks at three days. If each week you need a hotel room, I mean, each night you need a hotel room at $108, if you choose not to share times three, that's $324 you're paying to go to your base and have somewhere to sleep. Um, but let's just say most people split. So on average, $150 a 
times four, that's $600 each month <laughs> I am spending to, um, to be comfortable when I go to Oakland. There are people that stay in the crew lounge. I'm not them people. I'm, and I'm just leaving it at that. And technically, we're not supposed to stay there, sleep there. Um, you're not supposed to do that. But people do it. And in Oakland, they they kind of just turn a blind eye to it because they know it's hard. It's hard. So those are all reasons to save and get your expenses together before you really just leap into this career. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I was in the crew lounge the other day talking to this girl. Actually, we were on the shuttle going back to the hotel and she was telling me that she was on the phone with crew scheduling, begging for them to like release her so she could go home earlier, get her a hotel because she literally had no money and couldn't afford nowhere to stay. You know, like, it is tough, y'all. It is, it is. I, I think the money situation of starting this career is probably the hardest thing ever. It is the hardest thing ever. So if you are not financially prepared, Start getting prepared now or have some type of fallback plan when it comes to money. Um, that was another long answer to your question, but I, I want to give you all the visuals and the ideas. What are some things, this is Sean Monique. What are some things you like and don't like about your new airline compared to the old ones? You know... I've been saying that I really didn't want to do like a comparison necessarily because one, I really haven't been flying that much to tell y'all two thumb reserve. I, I have not flown much at all. Um, so it's really hard to compare. Um, I wanted to kind of give it like my whole probation period to do a comparison, but I'll speak on just a few things. Now probation is six months. I'll speak on just a few things right now. Um, what I do like are the things that I mentioned, right? We have a base in Houston and there's no minimum, no maximums. Um, I'm not going to say I don't know of any other airline, but I don't personally know of any other airline that has no minimums, no maximums. Like you had to work at least a minimum amount of hours each month. So that to me by far is like amazing. Um, our commuter policy is good here. So I'm a commuter because I commute from Houston to Oakland and anybody else that commutes from wherever to their base is a commuter. Our commuter policy here is probably one of the best in the business. Um, we only have to try to make one flight to our base and if we are unable to get on for what other whatever reasons other than us just not showing up to the airport. Um, if the flight is oversold, delayed, um, weight and balance issues, mechanicals, whatever, whatever reason that we cannot get to work on time, we are covered, meaning that we will not be, um, we won't get any like occurrences or infractions or anything like that on our record because we were not able to get to work in time. We only have to try one time with our airline to be covered. Now, will crew scheduling ask you to continue trying to get to work? Sure. But once you try that one time to get there on time, you're good. Um, if it's an offline airline, like so if I wanted to take San Francisco, oh, San Francisco, Lord have mercy. Mother friends call me out. Um, if I wanted to take United to work or Delta or Spirit or Frontier or Alaska or JetBlue or whoever, um, I would have to try two times to get there on time. Um, that's one thing that I do like. Two things that I do like. Um, our reserve system, this ready reserve thing that we have here, I would probably have to say that I don't like it. <laughs> I would probably have to say that. Um, I've never been with the airline that has 24 hour reserve. And we have three different types of reserve here. We have ready reserve, which is 24 hours. So we have our reserve blocks are three days. So that was just three 24 hours, right? So 72 hours of being on call if you were not used. That's what happened to me my first ready reserve block in Oakland. I literally sat in that hotel for 72 hours and did not leave until it was time for me to go back home. 
Not a fan of that. Um, the other reserve types that we have are, are AM Reserve, which I believe is from like uh, 3 to 11 a.m. or 4 to 11, I think it's 3 to 11 a.m. And then we have a PM Reserve, which is from 10 to 8 or 10 to 7, something like that. Um, eventually with seniority, I might be able to bid for the, to hold those type of reserves and it's it's much better. I think it just gives you a much better quality of life. Um, ready reserve, the 24 hour reserve can drive anybody insane, especially when you're somewhere that's not home. Like if I was at home sitting ready reserve, 24 hour reserve, I probably wouldn't even think twice about it because I'm still at home. I'm still within my two hour comfortable window to get to work. But being in Oakland, I have nothing to do but sit there and just wait for my phone to ring. Um, I just, I personally don't believe that that is mentally healthy for anyone. Um, so I don't like that. That is something that they are currently um, negotiating in our contract to get rid of. And just from my experiences before JetBlue and Envoy, they had just different reserve shifts. There was no AM, no. Well, technically, there. I guess you could say there was an AM and a PM, but it, everybody was just. You just had the different reserve shifts. You either had the early morning, the midday, or kind of like the late night type of reserve shift, and that's just. It's just healthier because so for my. When you're on ready reserve, you can get a domicile break. You can get a break on your reserve period if you get used, and only if you get used, right? So. Like I said, the first three-day block I did, they didn't ring my phone, not once. So I was literally on call for 72 hours. Crazy, nonstop, 72 hours. At any point, they could have called me. So even if I wanted to go out and have a little fun, I couldn't go too far, which I didn't. But even if I wanted to, still had to be close. Now, if I'm ready to reserve the 24-hour reserve, if they call you... To work a trip with great let's go fly that's what i'm here for to fly um, once you're done with your trip and you were still actually within your reserve period they would give you a 12 hour domicile break which means you are off for 12 hours and then back on if they give you airport standby which is what i've experienced these last two reserve blocks i've done um after you do your five hour airport standby shift they will give you another 12 hour break Anyway, it goes, I don't like it <laughs> because it's just, it's just, it's just tough. It's just tough to be on reserve period. And that's really it. What are some things that you like and don't like? So yeah, I think I've answered that one pretty clearly. Um, MP travel journeys around the world. Hi, like say Eric's friend here. Hey love, you're my friend too. Um, so glad you're back in the friendly skies. Two questions. Hope that's okay. Absolutely. What is the maximum amount of legs you can work in one day? <laughs> and is it true FAs in your company clean the cabin in between flights? Happy New Year and stay blessed. Happy New Year to you as well. Stay blessed. You are there being blessed. We've already kind of talked through the DMs. Um, the maximum amount of legs you can work in one day. I think the maximum I saw was six. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine doing six legs? And just because I'm saying this, what a wood. They going to give me some craziness like that. But there is a Hawaii pairing um, that one, one day you do inter-island hopping. And it was six legs on that joker. Like, I don't care how short those flights are. They were all an hour less, probably about 30 minutes. But I don't care. That's six times boarding and deplaning. You, who take me out? <laughs> that's the most that I've seen. But that sounds exhausting. I've never worked more than four legs in a day. And y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Have I ever done five at regional? Maybe. Man, they may have got me once, but Lord, I pray. Cruise scheduling gods, 
praying to the scheduling gods that I never have to do six legs in a day because I might call out fatigued or sick. I, I just can't even fathom it, y'all. Um, is it true your company cleans the cabin between flights? That is very true. We are the cleaning crew. We do not have cleaners here at this airline. And JetBlue didn't either. Things may have changed at JetBlue since then, but when I was there, they called it... Um, uh, I forgot what they called it. Something something about something blue. I don't, but a blue term. They called it a blue term. Um, but no, we don't either. So after every time we deplane the airplane, the, the airplane is deplaned or even on a through flight, we as the working crew, the flight attendants mostly, the pilots can chip in if they want to, um, we have to go seat by seat and collect any trash that may have been left over by passengers. Um tidy the seat belts, you know, so they're not dangling. They like us to cross the seat belts. Um, and yeah, you know, we have a little sweeper thing on the, the plane too, if there's any crumbs or cookies or whatever left behind by little munching children. Um, so yes, that's very true. We clean the aircrafts, honey. It would be nice if we got some cleaners. Um, Brie Love says, I already know the answer to this question, but it wouldn't hurt to ask. Will you post some real estate? Uh, <laughs> Y'all, will you post some flight attendant vlogs, please? Pretty please with a cherry on top. LOL. I truly enjoy your vlogs and I would love to see how your journey is with your new airline. I certainly don't want to get you in trouble, but maybe you can post vlogs before and after your flights, like when you're at the hotel, etc. Um, Brie Love. My answer's still gonna have to be no on that one, y'all. I just, as much as I want to, and I'm, I do, I do want to, because I love this interaction with y'all. Like I, I live for it. I love it. But I only share a tidbit of the experiences that I've had with vlogging on YouTube and the feedback and things that I get from the company, and. Like, it's just annoying. Like, I'll be annoyed. Annoyed. Even on this um, training series that I've done, I've had comments that rub me wrong. You know, just people. Everybody thinks they know more than what they need to know. Everybody has an opinion on everything that you're saying. And I understand. I put these videos on YouTube and blah, blah. But when it comes to, like, work and things like that, like, this, this work where... Somebody has a control over if I'm still employed or not. I just, I can't do the actual vlogs. Um, but I can consider maybe doing a story time or two if something really interesting happened. I'll try to do that for you, okay? Um, Teresa Street says, hey love, I got micro locks in June. Ooh. Um, so I'm six months in. How long will you let your locks grow or do you plan on cutting them short? Glad that you're a flight attendant again. I will always watch your videos. Thanks for sharing your life with us. Be safe, blessed, and wishing you and your family a wonderful, happy holiday season. Um, oh, we gonna have, I'm going to have to speak. This might have to be a two-part video is what's going to happen. How long? Congratulations on joining the lock club, sis. How long do I want to let these grow? Every time I see a video with somebody that have their locks like down here, I feel like I want to I want to get them down there. But I also used to say that I kind of just want them like here. Like I still lean towards shorter hair. This this length right now, I'm kind of loving it. Um, but I do I do want it a little bit longer because my ponytail. Don't mind my edges right now; it's a little rough, y'all. But my ponytail still is a given the type of pony that I want yet. So until I get the ponytail that I want, we'll keep growing. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. Sabrina Crisp says, thanks for the video, honey. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you and your family. God bless. Thank you. Same to you, love. Um, John Ace Vito, what airline is or what is your favorite airline to work for? Um, so we can just automatically say that Envoy is my least favorite airline to ever work for. I've only worked for three now. Um, it's still a real hard toss-up because, like I said, I don't want to 
make a really strong, firm opinion on this airline yet when I haven't been here long enough. Um, but I will say that I had gr I had a great time at JetBlue. I mean, I loved the crews that I worked with. I loved the customers that we had there. Um, I loved the destinations and layovers, most of them, that we had there. Um, and just really, it was it was the crews that just, the crew, the, the flight attendants that I worked with and the pilots there. Um, I just always had a good time. You know, I think I probably maybe had one or two experiences um, where I worked with people that I just, I just didn't like, I didn't gel with. Um, and I'm hoping I have the same experiences here. I mean, I haven't, I mean, the few trips that I have worked here so far have been great. The people have been kind. They've been fun. Um, my first, was it my OE? No, my first trip out of training, the trip that I worked the day after Thanksgiving, I worked it out of Dallas and I worked with, she doesn't refer to herself as a senior mama, but um, she was like, I think 25 years in or something. She was definitely a seasoned lady, probably like in her sixties, um, little old white lady. <laughs> and we just, we just, we clicked, like we just worked so well together. She was, she was amazing. Um, the whole crew was amazing. I just, I had a good time. So I feel like I'm going to kind of get the same experiences here. I will say our routes and destinations here aren't as great. You know, like I just, we don't nearly have like as much, um, I wouldn't even say exotic, but like JetBlue had a lot of like Caribbean destinations, Caribbean layovers that we could do. Y'all know for the last um, year that I was there, I worked um, our first class. So I had like princess flying over there, was always West Coast, um, long layovers. So honestly, I just, I had it very good over there and I got super spoiled. So I'll just say right now, right now, um, it's, I don't even want to say it, but y'all know what I want to say. So, <laughs> um, I'm I'm hoping for great experiences here, just like I had at JetBlue. I'll just let that be the answer. <laughs> um, Antoine Bolig, or and Antoine, Antoine, Antoine Bolig. What is the most important lesson you have learned in 2022? <sighs> Antoine, you going deep? Um, the most important lesson. I think the most important lesson that I've always known, but I'm very glad that I follow through on continuously in life is just to like really stay true to yourself and follow your gut. You know, like I am, I follow my gut. I, I, I do not. And when I say I do not do anything that I don't want to do, I don't do nothing that I don't want to do. <laughs> uh -uh. I'm not about that life. When it comes to all things in life, career, personal dating, um, all the things, like I do what I want to do. I follow my gut. So I followed my gut with this coming back here and just saying, you know what? I could have definitely talked to myself out of it. I had friends questioning, not in like a bad way, but just making sure that I was really thinking through. Um, if I really wanted to come back and do this, like, are you sure? Do you really have time for it? You know, how's it gonna affect your real estate business? Um, all of that. Even in real estate, I've had some situations this year where I just had to follow my gut and you know, maybe that client didn't stay a client or things y'all so i would definitely say that would have to be it um just staying true to myself always and forever is the lesson that was at the top of my 2022 lessons um one plus you're fabulous i'm a loyal fan from lodge days 
JBU days. Um, congratulations on your new career, clever lady. I'm thinking of moving to a new city, FA goals. One question, what is the layout of your current house? Oh, I have an apartment tour on here somewhere. Um, is it a townhouse apartment? Kind of, sort of. Second question, what base do you think my airline will be needing new hires for the most next year, Denver or Vegas? Hopefully Oakland so I can get out of there, okay? Um, my apartment is, it's an apartment, it's not necessarily a town I guess you could call it a townhome. They don't classify them as townhomes, but I have a garage that is attached to my apartment. So I drive in and I, I walk into my door. So my garage is on the first floor. There's nothing down there, just a foyer. I walk up the stairs and then my, all my living space is up here. Kitchen over here, living room, bedroom, bathroom. Um, I'll try to remember to tag my apartment tour so you can see. Um... I, you know, I really don't, I don't have an answer for that question because all year long they have been sending flight attendants to basically all bases out of training. Um, so who knows, but I know that they plan to hire another 3000 plus flight attendants next year. So it's quite possible that if you don't get the base that you want, um, directly out of training, you'll get it very soon. Most people were getting bases that they really desired within a month or two that they got out of training. Um, the only reason that my movement isn't moving as swiftly is because I was the last class to graduate for the year. So there is a mm, November, December. It's like a uh, nine week, almost 10 week pause of training from when uh, my class started to when a new class will start so or maybe I can say we were the last class to hit the line the last week of November November 24th ish um, and the next class to hit the line will be February the last week of January um, so once again that's like two months of pause so when there's not a lot of influx of new flight attendants coming in that slows down the movement of people being able to um, go to different bases <sighs> How are the dogs? The dogs are good. I'll insert a clip. They're great. They're, um, Every time I think Aspen is getting old and might be, you know, trying to clock out on me, he does something else to show me that he's still young in spirit. <laughs> I, oh my God, I'm about to cry. I can cry right now thinking about it, y'all. I love that little dog and Denver. I love them both. Um, but y'all know Aspen, that's my baby. I got him in college after a breakup and that's been my main man since then. Um... <laughs> um is it easy to move your reserve days? I'm going to say no. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I'm just thinking about what I'm going through right now, trying to get these reserve days gone. Um, so, I don't know if it's because I'm based in Oakland, one, or if it's just this time of year, two, but... I have had to put money, honey, on these reserve days to get them gone. So the flexibility is real here. One more thing that I like about here is that you are able to pick up um, outside of your base. Some airlines have that, some don't. I believe we could do that at Envoy, but like, why would I do that? Um, at JetBlue, I could not do that. Um, so what I've been doing this week, because we got our schedules for... January and I got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday reserve days. So every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of the month, those are my reserve blocks. So here we can trade. So what we can't do, which I'm used to being able to do at the other two airlines is just completely drop it. 
you know, like I could drop it for vacation hours or I would be able to switch things around with myself or with open time or things of that nature. Um, you know, you're probably asking this because you, you understand flight attendant life. So I believe this lingo should be making sense to you. Um, here, there's no flexibility with our reserve days unless we trade with someone else. There's nothing that I can do with my reserve schedule to make it more convenient to me unless I find somebody else to help me make that more convenient. So I can get with somebody else and swap our blocks and that's the other thing ah, y'all heard me i'm thinking about it in the moment like my other airlines our days weren't like that so i kind of do like that our our days are so they're scheduled the way they are just the same days each day each day of the week for the month i like it but i don't like it because that comes with restrictions so the three days of the reserve block means that I can't just give away one day. I have to get rid of the entire block, the entire thing. Um, so there's there's some pros and cons to it. Um, what I've done for the month of January, I had to sell my blocks, uh, my reserve blocks for Oakland. I have Oakland ready reserve, the 24 hour reserve, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the month of January. Um, I was able to sell the last three blocks that I have for the month. I'm still trying to get somebody to take this first block of the month um, for $200 a block, y'all. <laughs> ah! Which some part tends to like, yo, that's cheap. What we used to have to sell blocks for back in the day was crazy. You know, they're like, that's not even that much. We used to have to sell them for like three, five hundred. I'm like, well, I'm living in today's time, honey. That's eight hundred dollars I'm putting on this schedule to get rid of my schedule to just clear that board. <laughs> so then I can pick up in Houston. Um, and then hopefully pick up for money to, you know, get some of my money get a lot of my money back. Shoot. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that's easy or not, but right now it it just it feels hard. I think it's one because nobody wants to go to Oakland, especially for ready reserve. The type of reserve that I have and the place that I have it in is like yuck. You know, like I know most of my class, only I think three people actually, no, I think one person actually lived in Oakland. Um Another lady lived like in Sacramento so she could drive. I think there was like three people where Oakland was actually convenient for. The rest of us and my PM portion, AM portion of the class, which was 61, 62 of us, nobody else lives in Oakland or wants to be there. So, and not that I can only sell to them, I can sell to anybody in the company. Um, but nobody's checking for that. Nobody's, nobody's checking to in Oakland. Y'all, I am so over Oakland. Um, but I'm happy, happy for attending. Um, yeah, so I don't really know if it's easy or not. Um, like I said, I'm still waiting for somebody to want to take my $200. Take this money and take these three days so I don't have to commute back and forth. And the way that I make it make sense... I'll be talking about dating y'all. These men crazy. Um, the way that I make it make sense is that one, I wasn't trying to sell them for 200. I was trying to sell them for a hundred or maybe 150, but I had to get competitive because people wouldn't budget. Um, but basically I just looked at it as like a trade off. Like either I'm going to commute to Oakland, have to pay for a hotel room, which I was saying is about 140, uh, a weekend. Or I can just pay somebody to take my reserve shifts and keep my little happy butt at home and work out of Houston. I'm st I still want to work. I just don't want to commute. So, I don't know. It, I don't know. So, the, the prayer, woo, sweet baby Jesus. 
The prayer is that I was hoping for February. Well, really I was being optimistic about February because I talked about the incoming class, right? Like we really won't have a huge influx of flight attendants until the month of February is actually going on. So I don't think I will be awarded a base change for February, but I am praying, oh God, I am praying come March that I'll at least be out of Oakland, hopefully to Dallas if I, well, hopefully to Houston, what am I saying? Hopefully to Houston, if not Houston, at least Dallas, because Dallas is such an easier commute for me. I mean, I've seen me do that before. Um, so yeah, so right now, if you got the money, you can sell your blocks and you can try to make it up by picking up other people's trips or reserves that they don't want, hopefully out of the base that you want to be in. Um, which I had kind of, now I'm just going on. I had kind of secured picking up this girl's um, Houston PM reserve, but she just texted me saying that her brother is a flight attendant too and he wants them. She was going to pay me 150 for each of her blocks. So that would have been um, the $600 that I was recuperating back. So then I would have really only been out of pocket $200, which wouldn't be too bad because that's still less than I'm paying each month to go to Oakland. That's how I was looking at it and making it make sense in my head. But so... It's doable. That's the answer. You just, you gotta, you, you gotta be able to do it. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm going to make this, uh, I'm probably going to post this on the 24th and then the second round of questions, because I did post on Instagram for them to ask questions. The second round of questions will be Christmas day. So forget what I said in the beginning. I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Y'all know I'm long winded. So I hope y'all got some popcorn and some tea or some wine. I'm not drinking for the month of December. I'm fasting. Um, for the Lord. Um, but yeah, you know, I'll tell y'all the real reason why I'm fasting. I got crazy friends. Y'all seen Kira and Kevin on my vlogs before. If, if you watch just any random vlog, they, they pop in and out sometimes. I was over at their house the other day and Kevin was like, when you gonna get a man so we can go on couple trips and things like that. <laughs> so I was like, I'm trying. Like, I'm trying, but like I said, like, I don't, we ain't over here just settling for anything and, you know, I do what I want to do and these, this, what's, what's been going on in 2022 wasn't it. So, he was like, well, you need to fast. And I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> Long story short, so I'm fasting. I'm fasting, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, bye. <laughs>